Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. Morning, I'd like to turn to Psalms 105. Psalms 105. This mic was on. I hope y'all didn't hear me sing the solo. I didn't know it was on. Psalms 105. It's really good to say one here this morning. Let's continue to pray for our saints. I'm glad to hear that Alvin's uh, test went well. Let's continue to pray for him. And of course, we know Troy and his family. Uh, and pray for them during a the time of bereavement. Look at Psalms 105. I'm going to read uh, verse 17. Now watch this. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They afflicted his feet with fetters. He himself was laid in irons. And notice verse 19, until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. You notice after verse 19, you see the king sent, sent and released him, the ruler of peoples, and, uh, and set him free. The ruler of peoples and set him free. He made him lord over his house and ruler over all his possessions to imprison his princess at will, that he might teach his elders wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, thus Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And he caused his people to be very fruitful and made them stronger than their adversaries. Those, that's the result. Of course, we know this is talking about Joseph. I'm going to show you something. Now watch this. Now from here, we're going to go to the book of Genesis. Watch. So he sent a man before them, Joseph, right? Who was sold as a slave. They afflicted his feet with fetters. And so I want you to understand how Joseph traveled to Egypt. Now watch. So they afflicted his feet with fetters. He's a slave, sold into slavery. He himself was laid in iron. But notice the word until, until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. So the word of the Lord, I'm inclined to believe the word of the Lord proved his innocence. Watch. The word of the Lord proved his innocence. So he's an innocent young man. He's 17 years old. And you get into the book of Genesis, his brother was, they were jealous of him. They hated him. And you see there, we know their actions. And so they sold him into slavery. Uh, at first, they wanted to kill him, uh, but they did not kill him. So they threw him into a pit, which was a pit that had no water. So God was there. But I want you to understand something very interesting that you see how he traveled to Egypt. He's an innocent man, an innocent young man. He's a teenager. He doesn't know what's going on. And so now he's trapped and, and he, his brothers overpower him and they do this terrible thing to him. And, and notice how Psalms talks about this, though. So when I look at this, I see that God was in the picture. But notice at the end of, uh, you look at verse 24, and he caused his people to be very fruitful and made them stronger than their adversaries. And so Joseph going into Egypt, not knowing what's going on. And I can't imagine his fear thrown into a pit, uh, no water. It's empty. Thank God it was empty. And so now he's sold. He doesn't know what, what his outcome. And, and, and so when they finally take him out of the pit, he's sold into slavery. He's going to Egypt. But not only that, I want you to understand how he traveled. Fetters and chains, just a slave. That's how he traveled. Very uncomfortable. 
It wasn't pleasant. Can I want you to understand, can you imagine the emotional, uh, a young man at 17 years old, uh, his emotional status, the way he felt emotionally and physically. So I want you to get this travel. He's going into Egypt, doesn't know what's going on. And so now he's emotionally drained. He's afraid. And he's physically in some pain and trouble. That's that, that cannot be comfortable. And so the people who took him into Egypt, they were not concerned. He is a he's he's a product. But because but I like this in verse 19, until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. And so remember what it's saying here. We're going to go look at it in a minute. So Joseph becomes a slave. And then because he is faithful to God and and part of his wife made advances and he would not uh, adhere to those advances and he made a stand against God. He would not sin against God. The Bible says he was a handsome man and she noticed he was a handsome man and she made advances at it. And so but he would not adhere to that. And then when I look at that story, I see this is a young man, 70 years old. He's a slave. And, and, and we know God was with him because God blessed the house of Potiphar because of Joseph. He blessed Joseph and he blessed, Pot he blessed Potiphar's house. So Joseph has status now, but he still doesn't know what's going on. And, and so while he's there, he's doing his job and, and he's in charge of everything because Potiphar recognized that God was with him. He's in charge of everything. He has status. And so now, again, she's, made, she's making advances at him and he would not adhere to those advances. So I look at this young man, I see how obedient he is to God. But I want you to understand his obedience. Watch this. He doesn't know what's going on. And, and, and understand, he's, he's taken to Egypt in an uncomfortable situation. When he gets there, he sold, uh, he sold to, he, he belongs to Potiphar now. And while he's there, uh, they notice something about him. He stays faithful to God. And I guess his integrity, his attitude was something special because people notice when you are in a difficult situation, but there's something about your attitude, your humility. People recognize that it was something about this young man. They recognize. And plus, and I, I'm inclined to believe that when he arrived and, 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 and his the way he conducted himself and then the house was being blessed and they put two and two together. And it's like, let's. So God's providence was with, was with him. And, and so Potiphar let him rule his house. He still doesn't know what's going on. And so now here's a teenager. We call him an adolescent. And, and, and so now she makes, he makes these advances. And you think he would take the opportunity. He doesn't take the opportunity. He lets her know, how can I commit this sin against God? And I'm watching. I'm listening to this story. And I'm reading. I'm thinking, what? How faithful? What, he's extremely faithful to God as a slave. Doesn't know what's going on. And so he's waiting on the Lord. See that? He's waiting on the Lord. Listen. He's waiting on the Lord. What I want you to see, waiting on the Lord is being faithful to God. That's what I'm talking about. He's waiting on God. He doesn't know what's going on. He did not know. And remember, towards the end, he recognized the situation and he was excited about it, but he didn't know. At the same time, he waited on God. Now, God has given us this story. And, 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 and so we, we have to, when I look at this, I, I try to put myself into in his situation and and I see that when he waited and I, I look at how when he's at Potiphar's house and, 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 the, and, the, and Potiphar's wife made advances at him and he says, how can I sin against God? And I see that waiting on God is being faithful to God, being obedient to God regardless. So as a slave, he's obedient to God. But wait a minute. Because he stands up and does what's right. And, and, and she tries and she tries, she tries. And, and, when, and, and so he runs out of the house. She grabs his coat. He runs out of the house. He leaves his coat. See, he's faithful to God. He's fleeing from sin. He gets out of it. He doesn't play with it. He doesn't go with the temptation. He's running from it. He runs from it. He flees. And because of now, you think that God is not with him. Now, remember, we talked about that's free will. So part of his wife, uh, she has free will. Part of her has free will. Joseph has free will. And, 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 and so... Uh, uh, God dis, does not interfere with that free will, but God's providence is still working with Joseph. He's still behind the scene. Joseph, made, she made a decision. He made a decision and Joseph made a decision. So he runs out of the house because he runs out of the house. So she decides to defend herself and she lies on Joseph just to make herself look good, to defend herself. Uh, of course, she, she knows she was wrong. And so she tells a lie. And because of that lie, Joseph is thrown in prison. 
So now he's in prison. Can you imagine? I want you to see that he's waiting on God. He's waiting on God. Waiting for, I don't think he really knew, but he's trusting in God. And so now he's thrown in prison for something he did not do. He's innocent. Read the story. He knows he's innocent. He makes statements of his innocence. And, and so now he has to spend years in, in, in con he's in prison. Confinement for something that he didn't do. Innocent. When he gets to prison, God is still blessing him. So now he's in charge in the prison system. Very interesting. So I, as I look at that, he's waiting on God and God record. Now, remember, God recognizes that he recognizes his faithfulness. And I'm inclined to believe this has a lot to do with his attitude. I believe that Joseph had a great attitude. They recognized there was something different about this young man. And, and see, I can have a great attitude in, in times of, of, of wonderful times. I can be a godly person in wonderful times, and I can be a godly person in my difficult times. See, people see, when everything is going well, they recognize my happiness. This is a good man. But what people see when things are not going well, how do you behave? And I think people really see that, respect that. And they respected this young man because you notice that when he gets to the jail, and I'm sure a word got out about this Joseph. He was something special about him. He gets to the prison. He gets to prison, and, he, and the prison is blessed. And the, the, the one in charge of the prison system puts him in charge of everything. I mean, it really is that we're really going to, it's like, we're really going to take advantage of this thing. This is, this is a wonderful situation. So it's, it's very interesting to me that when he was with his daddy, remember he had these dreams, God was with him. And when they sold him into Egypt, even with the chains and fetters that he had to suffer, God was with him. And when he goes to, uh, uh, when he goes to Potiphar's house, he's a slave, God is with him. And when he's sent, he sent to prison for being innocent, remember, remember this, I want you to see this. He's thrown in prison, he's innocent. He was still favored to God. And notice that, he was still favored to God, and God is right there with him. See, there's a difference, there's a difference uh, you know, when you, if you go to jail because you did something wrong, and that's different. But no, God is with him. He's, he's sent to prison because he's standing up for what's right in the eyes of God. And, and, and you notice that he could not leave that prison system until God freed him, but God was right in there with him. I want you to understand that. God can go anywhere he wants to go. God is omnipotent, all-powerful. He's omniscient, all-known. He can do whatever he wants to do. He can go anywhere he wants to go. So Joseph was behind the, in the prison system, locked down, and God was right there blessing him. You cannot stop God. It doesn't matter what happens in our lives. God is going to always be there for us if we allow him to, but we have to wait on the Lord and be faithful to him. Watch. Now, notice this in this verse. We're, going to, we're about to go to Genesis chapter 40. They, verse 18, they afflicted his feet with fetters. He himself was laid with in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tests him. So the word of the Lord proved that he was innocent. Now watch. The word of the Lord proved that he was innocent. Proved his innocence. And, and so when that time came, remember, I, remember what happened uh, verse 24, and he caused his people to be very fruitful and made them stronger than their adversaries. Remember, when Joseph, when, Joseph uh, when he was sent to Egypt, remember, his family came after him. After God blessed Joseph, he became the ruler. His family came. There were 70 people that went into Egypt. And because of Joseph, the 70 turned into millions. And that's where Moses comes in. Remember Exodus? When they, were, when they had developed, when they had grown, the population grown tremendously to millions, it was time to move them out of there. That's why you have Moses and you have the book of Exodus. They're exiting out. They're going out of Egypt. Now it's time to, it's, it's like this part of God's plan. It's millions of Israelites. Let's just take them out of there and let's get it done. Do what needs to be done. Remember, the whole, the objective was Christ came through the seed. See, Joseph had no clue, but he waited on the Lord. I want you to see this. He's in prison waiting on the Lord. He's a slave waiting on the Lord. But I want to understand something. Remember with his daddy, he had status. Remember he had status with his daddy. Joseph had status. And that's why his brothers hated him. Not only that, Joseph had dreams and, and, and he gave the credit to God about those dreams. And his brothers hated him because he had dreams because his dreams represented that they were going to bow down and worship Joseph, which they did. But he had status. So I want you to understand that he's 17 years old. He has status. He has this wonderful coat. He's somebody special. 
uh, he was a faithful young man to his father. You remember his father go t- told him to go check on his brothers and how he traveled to go check on his brothers. Obey. He's an obedient young man. And, and, and because of his faithfulness and, and et cetera, of co- you know, I'm not going to get into that. But if you favor one child over the other, the other children are going to become envious. We know that. And we're not going to go there. But you, you see, he was so faithful to God and his brothers hated him. They were jealous of him. I mean, and so he went from having status to being a slave to not knowing anything, not what's going on, from being a slave to being an inmate. But he waited on God. Not even knowing. I believe his daddy, his daddy told him very well. Now watch this. Joseph had dreams before he was taken away. So you see that, that he, he had a relationship with God. And I know he had a relationship with God because when he was tested, you, see, you saw his relationship. Joseph had a special relationship with God. Joseph really loved God. You realize what he says to to Potiphar's wife? How can I sin against God? He mentions when when she makes advances at him, she makes uh, 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 he makes a statement about, you know, she he reminds her that Potiphar put me in charge of all these things. But then he says, how can I sin against God? See, that's he had a relationship with the father. Abraham had a relationship with the father. David had a relationship with the father. Moses had a relationship with. Esther, I believe, had a relationship with the father. Mordecai had a relationship with God. Those special prophets, Habakkuk, had a relationship with God. They had the, the certain kings, like, they had a relationship with God. You can tell because when they were in certain situations, how they conducted themselves, they waited on God. Sometimes you, when you're waiting on God, we just don't really know what's going on. We can study the scriptures, and, and, and the scriptures teach us this, and, but we have to wait and, and see the time when when we are in a situation where we, when we have to wait on God, that determines how faithful we are to God. Now, we're talking about 17 years old. So he's 17 years old when he's, thrown, when he's taken away. And when he becomes ruler, he's 30 years old. I believe that's 13 years. And, and, and so that's 13 years, an innocent young man. And so from 17, he becomes a younger man to a man. And when he's ready, he does what God requires him to do, not knowing anything. He's waiting on God. When I say waiting on God, I'm saying you be, fa- you be faithful to God. Waiting on God is being faithful. I want you to understand this. Watch Joseph. Joseph could have, watch, we're going back to this again. I have to say this. He's taken away and changed and fed. At first, he's thrown into a pit. Then he's taken out. And then they sell him. He becomes a slave, and he's taken away with chains and fetters. And then he becomes a slave and becomes a, an inmate. For years. And, and notice, but I want you to understand, waiting on God is being obedient to God. Being obedient to God is like if, if I'm going through whatever I'm dealing with and I'll continue to worship God and I continue to, continue to conduct myself as a Christian, I'm waiting on God. See what I mean? If, if, if things are, are going hectic in my life and, or if, if I'm dealing with stuff at my job and things are just not going right, et cetera, et cetera, and all of a sudden, I render evil for evil, and I, and I just, my attitude is t- terrible, and, and I, I'm not waiting on God. I want you to understand, I'm, I want you to grasp this. Waiting on God is having the mind of Christ at all times. And what he's saying, think about this. You cannot offend me. You cannot hurt me. I'm waiting on I, God. And even if you do something to me, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And so even if you're doing something to me, I'm waiting on God. I'm going to treat you the way God requires me to treat you. I'm going to talk the way God requires me to talk, talk to you. I'm going to continue to worship God. It doesn't matter. I'm waiting on God, and God will deal with the rest. That's what I'm talking about. See, people think, well, I'm, well see, if, 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 if we go through it and you stop worshiping God, you're not waiting on God. I want you to understand this, this young man, very powerful young man. Look at uh, Daniel, a young man uh, sent to Babylon. Innocent young man, he's caught up in that. I mean, God uh, sent, uh, you know, the prophecy. God told the Israelites, Jeremiah talks about it, Ezekiel talks about it, and Isaiah talks about it. They're going to be taken into uh, Babylonian captivity because of their sins. Daniel's one of those uh, young men taken. He was a boy, young, I don't know how old he's a teenager. He's taken away to uh, Babylonian captivity. While he's there, he's favored to God. He went out even, he couldn't, he, he's, he's not going to eat those foods that is not right. See, he's faithful to God. You see what I'm saying? The, and that's what I mean when I'm saying waiting on the Lord. So watch this. Let me go here. But I want before I go to chapter 40, we're going there. But I want to read this verse again. 
Remember verse 18, until that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Now remember verse 17 again, he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. So if you're sold as a slave, people think you must be guilty of something, right? Something's not right. They afflicted his feet. There's no respect with fetters. He himself was laid with irons until the, until the time, uh, till, until the time, till the time that his word came to pass. And so even in verse 18, let's go back here. Verse 18, you see his travel. Let's go back to verse 18. Uh, he himself was laid in irons. That goes back to, and I'm inclined to believe that goes back to his time as an inmate. Let's go back there. So you see his travel and then you see his time as an inmate. Right. So watch this. So remember, look at that. He's he's an inmate. He's locked down. And and. And again, what I know, I have to emphasize until the time his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The rules of the people and set him free. He made him Lord over his house, the ruler of all his people possessions. Let's go to Genesis 40. Watch. Watch this. So here's when God, the word of God proved him innocent and the king recognized who he was dealing with and made him ruler. He was second to the, the king of Egypt. Look at chapter 40. You remember before this, Joseph had dreams. And we see here that Joseph is going to have another dream. So he had a, you see how God is in the picture? Now Joseph had these dreams, he had no clue what they were. He really, you know, they didn't really know. He figured all this out the end. So he had dreams when he was with his daddy, when he, everything was just going so well. But we're talking about 13 years. And if you read the story, he's, he, he wants out. Even Listen, even though he had a position, he still wants out. Read the story, he still wants out. I, it doesn't matter if I have a position, if I'm running a jail or what, I want out. I don't want to be locked down, especially if I'm innocent. So don't think he was happy because you read the story, he wanted out. You remember when he tells the, uh, let, let's go here. But l- let me do this quickly. He, here's when... The word of God proved him innocent. Now I'm going to skip over from some verses. In chapter 40 and verse 1, then it came about after these things, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord, uh, the king of Egypt, and Pharaoh was furious with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. And, and so he put them in confinement in the house of the captain of the bodyguard in the jail in the, the same place where Joseph was in prison. Wow. He's still there, innocent. He's still there, waiting on God, waiting on God in prison. Now, verse four, and the captain of the body of God put Joseph, uh, put Joseph in charge of them. Now watch, God's providence. And he took care of them. Look at Joseph's heart. He, this, this man is a, a heart of humility. He's taking, I don't see this, I don't see an, an, a terrible attitude. He's taking care of these two men. He's taking care of them. He was a special young man. And they were confinement and they were in confinement for some time. See, they were there for some time. It's like they didn't, they didn't go on a Tuesday and somebody paid their, pay their bail and got out Wednesday. They were there for some time. You see his attitude. Then the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt who were confined in jail, both had a dream the same night, each man with his own dream and and each dream with his own interpretation. And when Joseph came to them, notice his concern in the morning and observed them, behold, they were dejected. They were sad and depressed. Notice his concern. See, and he asked, and he asked Pharaoh's officials who were with him, who were with him in, in confinement in his master's house. Why are your faces so sad today? He's look at his heart. He, he, why are you so sad? Then they said to him, we have had these dreams, etc." And Joseph, in other words, Joseph interprets the dreams. Verse 12, then Joseph said to, this, to him, this is the interpretation of it. 
For three days, then he, for three three branches or three days, he interprets the dream. Verse fourteen. Only no, notice after he interprets the dream, he says, "Only keep me in mind when it when it goes well with you, and please do me kindness by mentioning me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house." <laughs> See, he knows. He knows. He's hurting. He's hurting. It's been too many years. He said, don't notice what he says in verse 13. For I was, I was in fact kidnapped from the, land of he, from the land of the Hebrews. And even here, I have done nothing that they should have put me in the dungeon. He knows I'm innocent. He said, when I, please remember and get me out of here. When you, if you, get me out of here. He, he wants out. But he's still faithful to God. That's interesting to me. He wants out. He's still faithful. You know how many people... When things don't go their way to become unfaithful to God, they blame God. He is still faithful to God. That's interesting to me. Now, watch this. And so he interprets these dreams. And, and you know, he says, verse 16, when the chief baker saw that he had interpreted, he had interp interpreted favor favorably, he said to Joseph, I also saw my dream. And behold, there were three baskets, white, white bread on my head and at the top. Of the, uh, and, and in the top basket, there were some of all sorts of baked foods for Pharaoh and the birds were eating them out and the basket on my head. And then Joseph answered and said, this interpretation, the three baskets are three days. So in three days, in other words, you're going to die and you're gonna, the birds are going to eat you, eat your flesh. So one was freed and one was going to die. And you know what? Joseph's dreams came to pass. See, Joseph's dream came to pass. Now, Pharaoh has this big dream. Now, I'm going to get out. I'm not going to stay here because I want to show you something. Pharaoh has this big dream in verse four, in chapter 41, and it happened at the end of two full years. So now we're talking about two full years. See? So, so in verse 23 of chapter 40, yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph but forgot him. So remember, the cupbearer was free. The baker was killed. So he forgot about Joseph. So you would think that now Joseph's got to wait two years. He's waiting on God two more. He's got to wait two more years. He don't know what's going on. He asked the man, he, he interpreted the dream. The man's going to live. In three days, he lived. And you know what happened when Pharaoh called him. One was killed and one was living. He lived and he's still Pharaoh's cupbearer. But he forgot about Joseph. So now he's, he just didn't forget. He forgot. We're talking about two years. What helped him remember when Pharaoh had this dream. So he's still waiting on God. So watch this. So Pharaoh has his dream. And so the cupbearer remembers uh, this. In look at verse 9. Then the chief cupbearer spoke to Pharaoh saying, I would make mention today of my own offenses. Pharaoh was furious with his servant and he put me in confinement in the house of the captain of the body of God, both me and the ca chief baker. And, and, and we had a dream on the same night, and he and I, he and I, each of us dreamed according to interpretation of his own. He's, he's letting Pharaoh know, I remember this, this is this Hebrew person, and he interpreted our dream, and it was exactly right. So Pharaoh brings Joseph before him. They clean him up, they shave him. You know what that means. You see, he was rough down there. They clean him, they shave him, clean him up. He goes before Pharaoh, and he interprets Pharaoh's dream. No one can interpret, interpret Pharaoh's dream, but Joseph does. But when you read the story, Joseph gives credit to God. Look at, look at verse 16. Joseph then answered Pharaoh saying, it is not me. Look at this man. 13 years. He says, it is not. Look at Joseph then answers Pharaoh saying, it is not me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. He's still giving credit to God. He's waiting on the Lord. And we know at the end, you read verse 38, you read chapter 41, verse 8 and following. Joseph became of the ruler of Egypt after he interpreted the dream of Pharaoh. Read it. Look at verse 39. So, so Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has informed you all of all of all this, there is no one so discerning and wise as you are. You shall be over my house. And according to your command, all my people shall do homage. Only in the throne, I will be greater than you. Whoa. You got a slave. You have an inmate. You, uh, look, he's a slave, man stealing. He's in, he's in confinement for many years. Who would think that he's going to be a ruler of Egypt? 
Only, understand what he's saying. Only one above me, Joseph, is me. Everyone else must respect you. You are the king. You are ruler of Egypt. God can do whatever he wants to do if we wait on him. Now watch. Here's a few scriptures. I love these scriptures. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Think about Joseph. See, I love that. Look, watch this. Psalms 27, 14. Wait for the Lord. But notice this. He says, wait for the Lord. Be strong. See, wait for the Lord. When I'm waiting, I'm being strong. That means I'm being faithful to God. Joseph was strong, not because of his physical features, not because of he was whatever. He was strong in the Lord. He stayed obedient to God. He kept his attitude. Remember, he was humble. He took care of those people. He was put in charge. He had a great attitude. He says, just so wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. So I'm, I, when I'm letting my heart take courage, I am strong in God. That means I'm faithful to God. Now watch this. Psalm 34, Psalm 37, 34. Wait for the Lord and keep his way. That's waiting on God. See, wait for the Lord and keep his way. See? Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. And let us not go weary. See? Let us not go weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. That's see, it, see, when everything is going well, I, I don't when things are going well, I don't, I'm not growing weary mentally or physically. I'm, everything's going well. See, when, when, when things are not going well, then I can grow weary of doing good. And so he's saying that, so, so for me to wait on the Lord, let us not grow weary in doing good. So that means you can't stop me. I'm going to continue to do good. Whatever you do to me, I'm going to continue to be faithful to God. See, watch this. Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. See, that's what I'm waiting on, on the Lord. If you look at Daniel, and I'm sure Joseph stayed in prayer. When you look at Daniel, Daniel stayed in prayer. Look at his life. He was a young man. And, 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 and remember, Daniel lived in captivity for many years because right, Daniel, we know Daniel was 70-something. I don't know if he was 80 when he came out of captivity. He was probably 80-something. Because when the Babylonians took over, they stayed in captivity for 70 years. And then Daniel was during a time when Medo-Persia conquered Babylonia, so he was still there. And he was still favored to God after all those years. See, and he was constant in prayer. Even when things looked just out of control, when things looked totally against him, he was constant. He trusted in God. He was waiting on God. Watch this. Hosea 12, 6. So you, by the help of your God, return, hold fast to love, and justice. Didn't Joseph do that? Joseph did that. Hold fast to love and justice and wait continually for your God. That's waiting on a lot. Watch this. Psalm 69 verse 3. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fell while I wait for my God. Listen. Think about Joseph. I am weary of my crying. You must know that he had to cry because I would be crying when I was doing a prison ministry. I think it was called Greenville or Greenwood, uh, Texas. I was there with a friend of mine. He was in prison ministry we were at the county jail. And this, this man was there. And anyway, he kept crying and crying and crying. See, he kept crying and crying and crying. He cried so much. After we had a Bible class, I talked to him. I said, you're going to have to wipe those tears. He's just crying and crying. I understood he, I don't understand why he was crying. I kind of, I don't, you know, I, he, I, if I was, I'd probably be crying too. But you, you know, I was saying, you don't need to let anybody see you crying. So, but I'm just saying, so I can imagine Joseph, he was, can you imagine this? I am weary of my crying. My throat is dry. Can you imagine that? My eyes fell while I wait for God, while I wait on my God. He's waiting on God. See, waiting on God. Proverbs 20, verse 23. Do not say I will pay evil for evil. I will pay evil. Wait for the Lord and he will deliver you. See, when people do me harm and I render evil for evil, I'm not waiting on God. Now think about this. All the stuff Joseph went through, you don't see him rendering evil for evil. He was trusting in God. You see that? You remember part of his wife made advances at him and she lied on him. He's thrown in prison. You don't see, what is he doing? He's waiting on God. He's still faithful. He's faithful as a slave. He's faithful in lockdown. And he was faithful when he was free from all that. 
First Peter chapter five, verse six and seven. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. When we trust in God, we can be humble. Because we know that God is still around, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. And so when I'm waiting on God, yeah, I'm going to suffer anxiety. You don't think Joseph had anxiety? <laughs> I would. But, you, you, but he, he cast his cares upon God. He knew that God cared for him. And I'm inclined to believe this. When God providentially blessed Joseph. You remember, Joseph was protected in prison. He was protected as a slave, even though things went terrible for him. He was still protected. And those things indicate that God is still with me. God providentially is guiding me. You ever have things happen in your life? You think of what is going on? And then something happens that you need to have. And you're thinking, how in the world did that happen? You recognize God is probably telling you that I'm still here. Just train yourself and stay faithful to me. Wait on me. See, think about this. If, God, if, if something happened to you just like that and God blessed you, in other words, it happened to you on Monday and, and, and things change on Tuesday, what will you learn? Nothing. Nothing. God knows what he's doing. Trust him. That's it. First Peter 3, 9. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with blessings. That's how I know I'm waiting on God. That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessings. See, see the stipulation? That is what God called you to do. So be careful. When people are conducting themselves in a Christian manner, it doesn't mean they're weak. It means they're waiting on God. And those, notice the results. That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. Thank you, Jeremiah. Think about what we said this morning. Wait on God and be faithful to God. Stick, stay with his word. Trust in God. God will lift us up. If we can help you, please come out and stand and sing the song for me.